Hello, 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 Count Sake here, back with another Minecraft video. Today, we will be continuing the behind the scenes look at the build for the Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Command ride that I made a couple years ago. If you haven't seen part one, you don't necessarily have to watch it, but I recommend that you do. So, yeah, just so you are caught up and you get to see a bit more than what I'm showing here. So part two actually focuses on the ride part of the build. So what you see when you're actually on the ride. It's important that I mention that we're not going to be covering the command blocks. I won't be explaining how I built, how, how all the effects are done, how this, like how this Jeep works and whatnot. Yeah, that's, that's something I don't believe I will be making a video on. So sorry if you were here for that. Well, other things that I should note is that it's going to be a little dark. Um, I might have to turn up the gamma at certain parts because like, yeah, if you can see over there, it's definitely starting to get a little dark. Maybe it might not be as dark for like some of you, but for me, it's like it's really dark. I think with that, let's get started. So where we left off, it was right about here. And right here we have the loading station. We have a fence post. Um, this is to kind of just prevent the player from just walking straight across and not doing anything. It was also to make sure that the player doesn't just walk into the into this thing and try to click on the minecart because if you kind of you might notice if you try to click on the minecart you're kind of just moving it around and then it kind of really just doesn't work really just doesn't work out so um the point is this was to just get the player to click on the minecart from a distance and well um the minecart looks a little weird right now so i'm just gonna reset its position and whatnot by um, pressing that button if you want to ever um yeah if you ever want to, if you ever feel like you need to reset the position of the minecart or whatnot it, it should be in this position by the way this is what the position i built it for if you see it like on top of the on top of the armor stands if you see it anywhere else if you see it tilted just hit that button it will reset the this the the design of this little thing here, I just I just did it just so it would be so that way the player could just very easily get themselves into position and yeah, click the minecart. Anyway, so with that, let's take a look around. Um, on the ceiling, we just have some slabs. These are actually just slabs. Like it's just to make it look like it's um cave-like, some sort of something like a cave with cracks on the ceiling. It's maybe not cracks, but yeah, yeah, it, it makes it look like a cave and. The support pillars, very simple, just take a some stairs, surrounded by a block, and then lead it up in the ceiling. The ceiling. It's pretty cool. Next thing you might notice is that um, the ground here looks very uniform. Well, the, po the purpose of this is that it's supposed to be the track, or the path that the Jeep follows. It's supposed to look like a ride, is what I'm trying to say here. So. If, if you can follow the this path here, you'll basically be able to figure out the the path of the ride itself. You might also notice over here that there's just this empty station over here. Technically, this ride is based off of a real-life ride, an Indiana Jones adventure in Disneyland. So that is what this is based off of. And well, um, the ride actually has two stations for loading and unloading. I actually did originally plan on, act, on having another Jeep be here or something, or maybe even a feature where it's like um, one of the Jeeps goes ahead and then, yeah, you can watch it and you can watch it as you wait and then, yeah, sing, things like that. However, I never really got to implementing that. If I ever feel like I need ever, if I ever feel like I want to redo this ride, um, well, yeah, I can do it, um, but I can definitely do it, but uh, I don't feel like I'm probably, I pro it's probably going to be a long time before I remake this thing, because rides take forever to build, especially when you're, when you're doing it by yourself. It took me years, and what, uh, this took me years to make, so be, be a little patient with that. I still, yeah, I still have other plans, but yeah, anyway, um, let's actually continue on, because I've been stay staying in this room for a bit. You might also notice that the light is also a little brighter around here, and well, yeah, it's kind of like that on purpose, just to, yeah, just for the player to be proper, can, so they can see. And well, yeah, unlike the end of the queue here, you can see it's a little dark, it gets brighter, and then suddenly it gets dark again. Because that is the start of the ride, and well, 
Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye is actually a dark ride. So over here we just have some ladder, nothing much, just a, just for aesthetic purposes. We have a wither skeleton surrounded by these creeper blocks, yeah, these chiseled sandstone, just for looks again. And then we have a redstone torch right there. That way we get some darker, just a very soft, faint light. And with that, let's go in over here. You might notice that we have some wood over here. It's not really real. It's nothing really special. Um, in the original ride, um, the real life one, it's actually supposed to be a mirror. But um, yeah, I didn't really make a mirror. I just decided to make it scaffolding. Yeah. So with that, let's turn off. Let's turn and we go straight. And into this room, we have um, I, I forgot what it was called, the Hall of Promise or something. This part, you have three different doors. Um, I won't exactly tell you what exactly happens with these doors. You, I mean, yeah, whatever happens, you're going to go through it. <laughs> and well, it's quite a bit of a long haul. You can see we have some walls. The walls look like they're really old because you got these holes. You got them holes in it. Hole in the wall. <laughs> and then we got cobwebs around it. And if we look on the other side, we also got some, well, vines. So everything looks really old. And yeah, looking at the ceiling, it looks rather, rather smooth compared to the walls. So that's something to be a little interested about. And as we go straight up to the door, you might notice how this is a different um, block than like sandstone. Um, don't mind it. It's just effects and whatnot. So yeah, this is supposed to be sandstone. Don't mind it. And over here, we just got some a wither skeleton head right there. More aesthetic things. And well, let's go through. Go through, place, place blocks, that way we can see. And yeah, again, more old, more place, to, it's a place designed to look old. It got sandstone, other stuff. And if we look over here, we have a golden creeper face surrounded by some redstone torches. I'm not sure, how, yeah, I don't know if anyone actually noticed this yet, but yeah, it's actually there. And if we look forward, well, you can see that there's a little creeper face over there, but we'll get into him a bit. And well, yeah, we got more creeper faces on the wall because, well, yeah, it's creeper faces. The creeper, he's right there. And as we walk up to him, yeah, he's a little bit of a creeper. And you might also notice how these blocks don't exactly look like they fit. And well, yeah, it actually has something to do with the effects of the ride and what actually, what door you go through yeah that's a little bit of a spoiler i guess you go through different doors but yeah the different you get different looks based on what door you go through and you yeah it, this is an aftermath kind of look anyway so with that we now turn into the tunnel of torment i believe it's called um and we notice we have a large shift in the um the design so we had sandstone and now we're transitioning to stone brick and again we, if we look at the ground we now use are using andesite with some stone bricks to make the track if we look around um if you the ground there it looks really dark but it's really it's kind of easy to tell it's it's just black it's just black wool um and if we look uh, go ahead and look in the distance there you might notice how it kind of looks like there's a lot more to this to this temple and well we have a wall here and we i built another wall on the other side <laughs> yeah so it's just like an inner and outer shell kind of thing but if i also take a look on this side you might notice how it looks like there's just some random hole here and well yeah once again if you see black holes well, it's just black wool. That's all it is. And with that, let's continue down. Wither skulls for some... Uh, yeah, for some... What am I trying to say here? <laughs> um, aesthetic purposes, visuals, whatnot. And as we go here, we see Indiana Jones for the first time over there. He's just... He's supposed to be guarding a door and whatnot. And you might notice how this wall over here is just made of diamonds. That's it's just that. And well, technically, there was a there was an effect that is actually unused, and well, it's and also it's never really got implemented properly. What was supposed to happen is that this door or this color, the diamond blocks, were supposed to be kind of in. They were supposed to be some sort of animation that plays 
whenever you go into this room. However, I think it, it didn't look like it worked. It, I mean, when I actually did it, it looked like it just stayed as diamond blocks. So apparently, when I implement, when I actually, um, when I actually released the map by then, it basically didn't work. And well, yeah, I've actually looked at it myself, and well, I can say is that it wasn't really very significant, and it kind of just made the thing a little bit laggy. So, um, yeah, I kind of just decided to leave it as just diamond blocks and forget about the animation stuff that happens. And well, yeah, um, combination, if you look at the floor here, we got some, this looks rather messy, but yeah, it's just, just stuff to make it look old. We got some cobblestone, stone, andesite, and I don't know why, I just thought, that, I think that andesite to me looks like cracked stone. So yeah, that's why I'm using andesite alongside the stone. And well, yeah, cobblestone just looks like really messed up stone. So yeah. Anyway. If we look over here, you might notice, it might not look too interesting, but notice how um, it's just a black hole, but there's light coming out of it. How is there light coming out of it? Um, if, you're one, if you're still a little bit confused about why it is so interesting or whatever, if I was to place a glowstone block here and a black wool right there, um, even if at a little bit of a distance, you should be able to pretty much tell that this is black wool. It's not really, it doesn't really look like there is anything. So why, if this is just some black hole, why is it, isn't it look like it's black wool? Well, trick is, it still is black wool. However, it actually is a gigantic room. Yeah, look at that. This is a huge, 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 huge room. And all of that was just to make sure that this light didn't make the make it look like there was like some there was just some black wool placed in front of this wall right there. That's what, what that's what that was for. What that's why this is such a huge chamber. Because yeah, if you can, if you actually stay over here, you can see that there's a slight difference between this one and the back. So it just looks a lot more better if I was to build this gigantic chamber of emptiness yeah over here we got some moss cobblestone just to make it look old and with that let's actually continue up 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 and over here um it's just a long tunnel that goes up nothing too much there but we suddenly trans transition into a a red sandstone area and we go back to using the um, the tracks that started off at the beginning with bricks and uh what is this? Polished granite. Uh, hello, um, editing count sake here. I don't really know what else to call this, but turns out I completely forgot to tell a story I had about this little part right here. So, um, you might notice how this part here looks really, really, really steep, like super steep. It's like a sudden drop. There is a reason for this, and in fact, um, it, why, one of the main reasons why it took me so long to actually finish the map, and it was because the minecart that the player rides in touches the ground. But if a player is inside a minecart, and then the minecart is like falling for a long, long time, what ends up happening is that the when the minecart touches the ground, the player just dies. So essentially, because the minecart is floating in the air for so long, it's essentially just falling, just falling forever. So when it does actually take, when it actually does hit the ground, the player just dies inexplic inexplicably. Originally, the ground was not this deep. Um, it probably was up to this level, I do not remember, maybe this one. But if anything, it was definitely not this steep. And... Oh, it was such a pain that I had to do this. It, it honestly kind of looks ugly to me now, but there was nothing I could do. If if I left it the way it was, the players wouldn't be able to um, make it through the whole way. I did, and I did not want to give people creative mode. Also, um, I've tried many things like giving the player like huge enchantment, like 32,000 enchanted um, boots, feather falling, things like that, giving effects of resistance. None of that worked. The player just instantly dies. So 
Yeah, the only way that I saw to be able to actually fix this problem was to actually alter the ground. And that's why this thing is super steep. And yeah, I will actually talk about this again, I believe, at the bridge um, whenever we get there. So um, yeah, so yeah, um, again, just using different types of sandstone just to make it look uh, different. And we come over here, things look really large here, but we're going to have to come there for a bit later. Now if we look a bit at the cliff side over here, you got some blocks here, netherite, uh, more blocks, and we got a pillar here, and we go enter. Now, if we actually take a look at the side here, you might notice that there's a little bit of a skeleton right there. And well, yeah, interestingly enough, you might say, why is he, why is he named Indy? That sounds a little creepy. And well, um... Turns out I actually made a little bit of a mistake when doing the command blocks. Um, that is, yeah, this has to do with some, the reason why he's named Indy is not because it's Indiana Jones. That No, this is not Indiana Jones. This, this is just a normal skeleton. It's just a bit of a mistake I made in the um, selection for a command block. So I kind of had to name him Indy, otherwise he would be affected by things that I wouldn't, that I don't want him to be affected by. And he might just go all over the place, he might do some effects, things might happen, and yeah, it, it became a little bad. So, yeah, skeletons or any entities that you see are basically named Indy. With that, um, we go over here. You can see that it's just a bunch of skeleton skulls with some cobwebs and yeah. Uh, the trip why oh yeah, you might be wondering what are these uh why are there strings over here? Well the strings are simply just to make sure that the um the that that the um the vines don't spread. So yeah, it's nothing too much, it's just all around. It's all at zero. And yeah, the strings were just meant to were the strings I think it was just to make sure that while I was trying to decorate everything and it wouldn't grow and whatnot. So yeah. Let's continue on to the next one. Over here we actually have a tiny skull with some uh, redstone torch eyes. I'm not sure if anyone really ever noticed it because you kind of just go by this really quickly. And over here we again we have a skeleton named Indy. But yeah, like I mentioned, all the entities are named Indy. And well, yeah. Over here, just got more cobwebs, got vines. And on this side, we got um, a skeleton who appears to have been stabbed. Now, um, this is actually really simple. Um, this is an actual entity, and we uh, and over here we have an armor stand, invisible armor stand, obviously. Otherwise, you would see the armor stand. That would be a little silly. Again, over here, just tiny chambers. And the last one, we have a little bit of a Easter egg over here. It's just a sign that says we're going to need a faster jeep. Anybody even know that reference anymore? So, over here, things get dark. Really dark. And it was kind of difficult to set this all up to, while making sure that this place was dark, because like I mentioned before with the light, especially if you're up close to bright parts, you'll definitely be able to tell that this it Did I just drop? Yeah, I dropped that. You're definitely going to be able to tell that this was would be um would, that you would definitely be able to tell that this is um black wool if there was just a light source that was bright enough to even touch a block of the wool. As we go over here, um, there's actually uh, a little bit of a see on the other side over here. We actually have some notice me. There's some barriers here, but that's for other things. It's just a bunch of cobwebs, vines, nothing too much. Same um, style as before. And if we go back over here, um, we just have a long corridor all the way across. Nothing too much again. And we go up. If we go up here, we have a change in the um, aesthetic. This is because this is a bridge. This bridge goes across from there all the way to there. And well, yeah. It's about time that I actually talk about the other parts that, of this. So over here, we kind of just have some... It's a very large cave. Oh my gosh, this thing took forever to build. 
I don't know how long this thing took me to build because like it's such a big room and I built this by hand. Keep that in mind. I built this by hand. I put everything by hand. I had to decorate all the walls. I had to make sure everything looked like it's not like this some flat wall, even though it kind of might look like it. You can, it definitely looks like there was an effort put into it. And well, yeah, I might notice that it's kind of lit up on the top and I do have a reason for that, but that is actually primarily for effects and whatnot. Um, it, the reason why it's bright at the top is because there are just hidden torches. That is literally it. If you were to just, if you ever were to decide to turn around, you would actually just see the torches hanging around. So yeah, that's just a, a little bit of a shameful thing, but it, whatever. It doesn't really matter too much. And well, yeah, it's just a little bit, just a little neat trick that I thought, like, because if you weren't paying attention, you would have just been going straight and you wouldn't have even noticed the torches you might even see even it even then if you were moving forward it, it kind of does appear slightly in your peripheral vision but it's just that the vines are in the way um yeah these vines they're pretty much they're just like this and well the, most of them if they're like ones like these they're just sitting on barriers that way it can just go down so, and yeah there we go and well over here, we just have a large. You might, you can, you might be able to tell what this is. It's basically a creeper face. I'd be a little surprised if you didn't actually notice. It has a general shape. It, it's supposed to look like it's been wear, worn out. You can see a lot of cracks. It looks really old. It has moss. It has some vines here, and then there's just this fire eye. Um, I'm not really going to explain what that does, but yeah, it's there. And over here, we just yeah, more stuff, chiseled stone brick. And then if we go over, I guess we can look at the bridge. The bridge is simply just some oak wood in con conjunction with some uh, spruce wood and what? And yeah, there's stairs, there's um, wood planks. And well, if I am going to be completely honest with you, this was not the original design of the bridge. The bridge originally had, um, it originally had like, um, oak fences or something with um, pressure plates on top of it for the middle and yeah the other side I think the outside was still um, was still I think it was still like some oak or some sort of stair but it, it was definitely completely different however I had an issue in the but there was some issues in regards to the ride so I actually had to change the blocks to just simply this because it was supposed to look like some old rickety bridge but right now it kind of just, it looks like a pretty sturdy bridge but fortunately yeah due to technical difficulties actually it actually is technical difficulties i had to change the the bridge to make it look more solid yeah and well if we take a look on the sides there actually are vines that actually grow off the side so that's a little cool and yeah nothing too much else and over here, stuff that you would have never seen, unless you actually went into third person, but yeah. You might not have been ever be able to see this. Um, it's supposed to look really hot, so I decided to put some netherite around, and well, yeah. And you might be wondering, why the heck is, why the heck did I make it look like the lava was just this ugly? It made it, it looks ugly. Why didn't I, why didn't I just make it a uniform, like, surface um no it, the reason why is because it doesn't look realistic it does literally literally you might notice how um lava doesn't lava doesn't look flat when you put it if you were to take a liquid and just place it on the ground or some molten lava it just it looks curved like it kind of looks curved like this it doesn't look exactly it looks like there are spouts or something yeah it looks like like over here there's lava being pushed up and out so yeah that's what that was supposed to look like also if i was to just push if i was to just leave it as just source blocks it doesn't look like the lava's doing anything it doesn't look like anything's happening to it so yeah it just looks too static and yeah that's why uh, pretty much whenever there's lava it looks basically like this now I don't know if I might use this again. It's just something I thought of using. I mean, no one can see it anyway, but it's there. That's what it looks like. We also got some little bit of some, I guess you can call these spires. I'm not really sure. But yeah, they're right here. 
some of them partially made of netherrack and others part and yeah partially made of netherrack and partially made of uh, sandstone a red sandstone yeah as with with that we can go up here and we're going to enter a really dark room well it's not too dark but whatever it's a oh wait i'm going the wrong way <laughs> and yeah we enter we just have some redstone lamps or some redstone torches with for the skull right there go back to the old trail design and we go into this very tiny room and oh my gosh this room trying to get the jeep through this room was honestly a much more of a big much more of a big pain than you might think well simply put you actually kind of go around it goes just around it's a very tiny room it's nothing really too much there's just you got some archways with some sandstone and stone bricks it's nothing too much yeah and then over here we have a bit of a little secret over here this is actually just a very tiny room nothing too much um there are, yeah there's something that happens there but that's an, that's an, that's in regards to an effect so yeah minecraft cave noise and with that we go into here and this is the part where I decided to start to make my own parts. I started to add my own stuff to this because, well, I thought I want, I just wanted to. I didn't want to make a one-to-one -one creation because I feel like that, like, yeah, you can always do that. But why not try to do my own things? And you might notice over here, it looks like this is the end of the ride. It looks like you're going through the end. You kind of slow down, but surprise. Um... That might be a little bit of a spoiler, but there's just this little lava pit around here. I actually spent a lot of, I actually did a lot of lava. I spent I put a lot of lava here, just even like all, all the way over here. Jeez. But yeah, there's a bunch of lava here. And yeah, you basically, you basically, it's just like, yeah. Okay, you're not done with the ride. What are you talking about? Anyway. And well, what is making it look like there's a light at the end of the hallway? Well, it's just simply a, a glowstone right there. Yeah, that's all it is. It just looks like it's the end of the world. It just looks like the end of the road because it's bright. And well, something to note is that if I was to take out this glowstone, you can kind of see that the ground is rather bright. It's kind of a lighting glitch and I can't really do anything about it. But yeah, that's actually a bit of an issue. But so it also makes it look somewhat light. I mean, you could kind of still see it. Especially like around here, but it definitely looks a lot more. It definitely doesn't just look like, yeah, it definitely looks a lot more believable. Like there actually is a, a light at the end because you can see that the back over here is also lit up and whatnot. That's why it looks pretty much um, it's believable. And with that, we actually can go straight through the wall over here and we go back to the old, the original track design go over here just a long tunnel made it look like a cave and we pass through right here this looks a little familiar and guess what it's just the room that we were in this gigantic room that it took so long for me to make and yeah go up and go to here you might noticing there are actually two paths here is there two ways um actually no you only go to the there's actually a, this thing goes to a dead end this goes to the rest of the ride but because this goes to a dead end, I might as well show you that I actually bothered to even continue this um, to a bit. So you go over here, looks more like a cave, but you slowly start to transition into a um, stone sort of setting. And with that, it actually just ends here because this is not where you're supposed to go. You never go this way. And yeah, you just end up going this way. Again, more cave. And then here is the transition to the rep to the stone. That also might notice we got some dispensers here and well yeah you basically you, you're getting shot at yeah you, you just get shot at by these dispensers and whatnot and over here we just got a little bit of a mine like this is supposed to be like a mine section you got a resin torch just to make it look a little brighter and we got some episode and we also got some diamonds i actually decided to hide some diamonds just to be like hey, can you find the diamonds well, I never actually mentioned that, but yeah, that's actually something I, I, I kind of liked. And over here, we're going up higher, we're going higher. And over here, 
True fashion Indiana Jones, of course. This is another part that was inspired by Indiana Jones. Of course, you got the flying arrows going past you. And over here, again, I added my own part. This is a giant long corridor. Up here, it's nothing too much, but it's just a bunch of, um, yeah, this again, we're using the black wool trick. It's really dark in here, and it's also far off in the distance, so you're not really going to be able to tell that it's black wool. And, well, yeah, we got some stone, we got some coal, ores all around, just to make sure that it looks like we're in a mine of some, a mine of some sort. And if we look over here, um, we have a long corridor all the way up. If we actually look, if we actually kind of look around, I believe there is some redstone. There, I'm pretty sure I, there is some redstone ore. And I actually had to do, okay, we're, I swear I had redstone ore somewhere. Okay, maybe not in this part, but all right. So yeah, we can continue to go down and well, yeah. Go over here. Oh, there's some redstone ore. Um, funny enough, if you actually right click on redstone ore, it actually glows. And that's a bit of a problem. I did not want the players to be able to um, touch them. So I actually needed it to make I needed to make sure that the yeah, I actually needed to make sure that the players couldn't just touch them and turn them on and whatnot. Um, now that I say it, I probably had a part where someone could just right click on it and then it would light up. Yeah, I tried to avoid doing that. I tried to put them out of reach, but yeah, they're there. And well, yeah, this is a really long corridor. Continue on and on and on and on and on and on until we get over here. Notably, there is another path here, but this is also blocked off. We got some black wool trickery. And well, yeah, over here we can continue. And actually, if you pay attention, there's some diamonds right there. Yeah, that's cool. Now, Okay. I one I'm pretty sure I actually had a little bit of a sec a little bit of a secret thing. I'm pretty sure I did. Ah, there it is. <laughs> okay, I actually hit a creeper face right in the in the uh, the top here. It's a little bit of funny a little bit of a funny thing that I did, but yeah, there's a creeper face right here. And with that, you actually go straight through this part. Um yeah, going over here, it's just a tiny, tight, very, um, very small cave you passage. You go through, go through, go through, more cave, yeah. And then we got another archway, you go here, turn left, go over here. We got this, so we got more black um, darkness stuff. And we got a long cave corridor leading up to the epic finale. Now, um, over here we just got some vines, got some, um, got some, uh, yeah, webs and whatnot. All of this just aesthetic, and yeah, try to make it look like a really like a cave, and yeah, it looks really. I, I'm personally really proud of this, especially the final product. And you might notice um, there's a bit of light coming from Indiana Jones. Why is it? Why is it that um, he's supposed to be holding onto a rope? I mean, I don't think I did a very good job of making him look like he is, because it kind of looks like he's. Um, never mind. It's not exactly very nice thing to notice. But you might notice how how is this, how is there light? There is no source of light coming from. Well, if you look really closely, you might notice something's off with this um, this little block here. Turn, this is actually a falling sand block. From a distance, you wouldn't be able to tell that that is a falling sand block. But yeah, this is a falling sand block, and there's a redstone torch on top of this um, fence post. So yeah, that's actually a little bit of a way I decided to make it look like it's illuminated right above him. And over here, we just got a little bit of another um, darkness thing, and it comes out like that. And with that, um, you actually go straight through the floor here. Yeah, that is actually based on the um, the lore of the actual ride. You apparently you crack through the floor and then you drop. This was so fun to make. Oh my gosh, I loved doing this. I loved making this. It, honestly, I'm surprised by how good it, the drop actually looks. I mean, the build itself and the actual ride, how good it actually looks. I am... 
<laughs> I honestly felt sometimes when I'm watching it, I actually feel like I'm dropping. I'm feels like I'm actually in motion. It's so cool. I really love it. And well, yeah. Um, but that is for you to see. Not um, I probably won't be spoiling it. But yeah, over here we're finally ending things off. We go through a little bit of a a little bit of a cave. We got some dirt here too, which is a little bit interesting. And yeah, we end up back here. It looks like there's a little bit of a hole in the wall, but this is primarily just because the front of the Jeep was kind of large, so it kind of looked like it was going through the wall. So I kind of just um, broke a hole over here, and yeah, that's what that's for. And over here, we see Indiana Jones for the last time. There's a bunch of pebbles on the ground. These, Yeah, these are pebbles. And we have a... a a crushed boulder right there. Yeah, that is. this is a boulder. It's crushed and broken apart. And Indiana Jones is like really tired. He's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I made it out. Yeah, that's why he's like that. So he, he looks up at you and you're like, yeah, hello there. And with that, we returned. We have returned to the entrance. And yeah, you never go to this side, but you will go to this side. That is it. Well, almost. That is almost it. Because, technically, all we have left is the exit. So when we go exit, we go all the way out. Straight through here. Just a bit of a cave. Nothing too special. Stone blocks. And with that, we are back outside. And this, my friends, is the build for the Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Command. This is the best thing that I've ever released. Oh my gosh, I am so proud of this. I mean, it's just a Minecraft thing, but I am so proud of it. I love it so much. I put so much time and effort into this thing. I had plans of making this way back in 2016, many years ago. And I'm so glad that I finally got it out. And with that, yeah, that's really about it for now. So thanks for watching and hope you've enjoyed.